Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Well, folks, again, as usual, we, we're basically talking to issues that are really relevant at this point in time here in the Portland metropolitan area, specifically in, in some cases here in Northeast Portland. And so as a result of that, uh, there's been one issue on the table that, as far as I'm concerned, has been in the discussion. And I'm talking about the issue of Trader Joe's on the corner of Alberta, piece of property on the corner of Alberta and MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Well, we thought we went out and uh, we found someone that has had a history, if you will, and a career in the real estate arena and has been uh, been in this area, understands this area, but as a business person, okay, that, uh, that basically could talk to the whole issue across the board. So I went and I approached this person and said, hey, look, would you be interested in coming on and talking and sort of informing the public, if you will, as to uh, the, this whole issue of Trader Joe's, uh, when did the issue come up, the piece of property, uh, where is it now, where are we going with this piece of property? There are a number of questions and whatever. So there's only one person that I know of that has that, that background from a business aspect of it that understand the real estate and the politics of the real estate in that area. And I'm talking about a gentleman by the name of Fred Stewart. And so we have Fred Stewart with us today. And what we're going to do, we're just going to give him the opportunity to speak his mind. And then at the end of the, of the, of the piece, what we're going to do after we take a break, we're going to show you what should happen in the community. Fred, how's it going? Going good, Bruce. Welcome aboard. Thank you for having me on again. And then simplify. <laughs> yep, simplify. <laughs> I'm wearing my first uh, Eagle Globe and Anchor. Well, I like that. That's, that's good. That's good. You need it. Yep. <laughs> okay, Fred, Trader Joe's. Lay it out to us. Big mistake. Big mistake in, 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 in letting it go. Um, there's a lot of mistakes in, in, in Trader Joe's. And a lot of missed opportunities, both inside and outside of the black community, um, when it comes to Trader Joe's, it's a heartbreaker. Mm -hmm. What's your definition of community? Well, community is a, is a couple of things. There's a several communities that you know people like me we serve. You know, I serve the community of where I live, my neighborhood, the people that live in my neighborhood, everybody, trying to make the entire community better for everybody. Then you got other communities too. You know, I got uh, the black community that's there. I've got the historical uh, landowners that, that are there. Um, you know, there's a lot of different levels of community over there. But the one that um, has been probably the, the most important uh, community for inner north and northeast Portland is the black community. If you mm -hmm. look at the history of the black population of Portland, the black community of, of, of Portland um, is, is essential to for seeing what we see there today. Mm -hmm. um, it's part of the reason why it went down. And it's a large reason why it came back up again, <laughs> you know. So tell me this. How long have you been in real estate in that area? I got into real estate. My first day of real estate was the 4th of, uh, I think it was the 4th of September, 1988. 88. So mm -hmm. you've been there. So you know the property. Correct. Okay. I know. I mean, I, Bruce, I've sold 719 addresses now in inner north and northeast Portland. Um, coming up on 1,400 transactions just in inner north and northeast Portland. That's not counting the rest of the, 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 you know, stuff I've done outside of Portland, outside of Multnomah County. Um, what percentage of sales were there as far as blacks are concerned, African American concerned? About, well, it depends. I mean, I've, I've worked with more black people selling than black people buying, you know, throughout my career. That's one of the reasons why I get offended by some people bringing up the gentrification issue. Because when I came into real estate, it was, it's kind of shocking how much real estate was owned by black people. Um, a lot. And black people left. Why? They did. Northeast Portland was a stigma. And you got to remember the history. Black people were forced to go into that area. It wasn't like black people were walking through Northeast Portland in the 60s and 70s going, oh my God, this is an awesome community. They were upset that they couldn't live in the, uh, near their jobs, it, near the parks, near, in, the, in the neighborhoods that they wanted to live in. Uh, Dr. Runthank moved into uh, to, uh, to, uh, Westmoreland back in the 1950s. And the, the rancor over him doing that, it, it was such an intensity that some black people, one of them being my, gra my grandfather, decided to sit outside in front of his house in their big old black Cadillacs to make sure that the, the educated white guys wouldn't come out and harm Dr. Run thing. Hmm. That was back in the 1950s. And that was a guy that 
I think anybody could say is a person that was a, a bedrock of Portland during his lifetime, not for black people, but for white people. So here comes the 1980s. Black people, for the first time in Oregon history, have the economics, the education, the sophistication to do whatever they want when it comes to living arrangements. And they took advantage of it. We had black people sell houses in Portland and move out to Gresham, move out to Beaverton, Hillsboro, uh, Vancouver, you know, Clark County. Um, they wanted to do that. Nobody forced them. It wasn't like the 1950s or the 1940s where you had city commissioners and mayors saying black folks, and I'm being polite, they didn't call us black folks back then, you got to live over here or our cops are going to beat the hell out of you. <laughs> You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was much different. So now, not, it wasn't. So it's not a gentrification kind of situation. You know, it, you know, my or mother lives in a house that she paid uh, about twenty five thousand dollars for in nineteen eighty five, and she takes delight that is worth it. And she's seventy four years old. She takes delight that the house is worth over four hundred thousand bucks. Today. Matter of fact, today. And you know what? All the black people I know, her age and some of them older, who bought and stayed in the neighborhood, they are not offended by how. Um, successful their real estate purchases have been over the last 40 years <laughs> but, you, <laughs> you know? but you saw it coming well you know yes i saw it coming but you got to remember as a young man uh, everybody black and white but especially old black guys uh said this is going to come you know uh when i was in middle school you know hanging out with my grandfather and his old friends you know they all talked about how this was going to happen how that one day everybody is going to move back into inner northeast and 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 for all of the reasons with the exception of bikes with all of the reasons that I'm hearing why people want to live there today how close it is to downtown how well centrally you know, located it is the whole nine yards this was something that was um, is not a surprise the only surprise that I've got that I've had is how uh, the city has failed the black community and I would say the city of Portland by uh, helping black businesses grow in these urban renewal zones, not just in inner northeast Portland, but all of them. And how, how do you define uh, urban renewal? Well, you know, we've had several urban renewal zones. We have, we have downtown mall was one. The Pearl District was one. Um, the, the biggest one on the east side is one where Lloyd Center's at. You know, Lloyd Center even has an urban renewal zone. You have the, the the convention center zone. There's several urban renewal zones, but the ones that black people most think about are the one that is was most talked about around them which is the one over here on MLK. Mm -hmm. And when you look at all of the urban renewal zones in Portland, all of them, not just inner Northeast, there is a lack of black business participation, period. And it ain't from lack from black people trying. So what's the benefit of urban renewal to the people? Well, if you're a white person, it's a big benefit. Um, if you're white in business, because you get cheap access to money, sometimes as low as 1%. You get cheap access to land. Sometimes you get to buy it. You know, I've seen as little as a dollar, but generally it's about 20% of value. Um, there's a lot of great things. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hating on anybody who um, worked hard, black or white, and, and got successful. But that's the fascinating thing is, when it comes to urban renewal zones, there's no black successes. <laughs> you know, none. There's none. So, I mean, it's all white. It's like a full tilt. You know? So all of these urban renewal zones. Now, now the fascinating thing is, most of our, our urban renewal zones, we got to help the plight of the black community. That's what we led in why we needed them. Not all of the urban renewal zones were, were, were based on that, but most of them were. This one in inner Northeast definitely was. The Pearl District was one. They counted every black person that lived in the Pearl District back in uh, 1990, I think it was, 1991. To justify. To justify. I think, I forgot the exact number. It was like 55 or 60. You know, and the average income was like 20% of the poverty level. And I remember being so blown away going, I did not, man, these people are poor. And a friend of mine who worked for the city at the time said, Fred, you got to understand, they're all transients. <laughs> you know, they're all transients. So think about it. The city of Portland used black bums, basically, people living on the street, mm -hmm. as a reason why we needed to turn the Pearl District into an urban renewal zone. And who benefited from the Pearl? N uh, none of those black people. Nobody black that I went to high school with. None of their mothers and fathers. I can't think of anybody black that's done well. I mean, we've had some new black people moving into the community that bought houses there. God, for, I'm very happy for them and stuff like that. But who, the landowners, the business owners. And then when I go through the businesses in the Pearl District, how rare is it to see a black person working in any capacity in any of the businesses there, whether it be a restaurant 
or one of the professional buildings there. They don't even have any uh, a black maintenance supervisors. What about housing in there? Were there any beneficiaries there? Well, yes, some low-income housing, but even if you look at that, not not enough. Not when you consider how much the the county and the city gave up for it to occur. Mm -hmm. You know, they they did provide some low-income housing, but they it, what I'm getting to is they should have done better. And I'm I'm talking now not because I want people to go around and point fingers. And th there are I will admit there's one or two people. I want you to know that I know who you are. I remember you. Okay, I, and you're still down there messing over black people. But in what, general, what is this at, at, the PDC? at PDC, Portland Development Commission. Yeah, right? But in, but in general, I want people to focus on the future because black people and poor people still live inside Portland. What are we going to do in the future to make sure what just went down will never happen again? Okay. One, these three or four people that I'm thinking about, you can't work for the city no more. And if I ever get down there, at the city, you're gone. Maybe you'll run for that. Okay, <laughs> you know, let's get down. But, let's, let's, no, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on. Let's, let's get down to Trader Joe's. I want to make sure we spend some time. Trader Joe's. Uh -huh. Start off at the beginning and then basically bring us up to date. Go well, on. to start off the beginning, I'm going to say what I've always been saying. This was Ray Leary, Gina Woolley, and Jeff Sackett. Who's Ray Leary? Ray Leary is a local Ray. black guy, the most, outside of you, believe it or not, the most successful black real estate developer in inner Northeast Portland history, bar none. Bam. And Gina was part of that too. Right? Gina was part of it too. She's up there with them. She's developed an apartment building on Fremont and uh, like Rodney. Um, the only black woman, by the way, in Oregon history to ever do anything like this. Okay. You know, and it's a good one. If you drive by it, it's beautiful. It's making money. There's no negatives about it. And you uh, made mention what 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 what. And then uh, Jeff Sackett. What did they develop that particular piece? That threesome. Uh, that threesome. They. The the, 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 well, what they did first is they talked the city into buying this property. I brought this to, the, uh, uh, over here, the what, what I call West MLK, between Alberta ah, and Killingsworth. Okay? There you go. And they chose that area as the most likely area for uh, commercial development, okay. what they call high-impact commercial development, okay. to bring in you know, a lot of car traffic, a lot of foot traffic. Um, and they were right. And when they first started, they were going to have a movie theater there. They had, uh, you know, they were ta in talks with uh, Magic Johnson and and and, um, and DreamWorks to put a movie theater and stuff there. I don't know where that went, other than it didn't happen. But we didn't miss a step. Uh, they immediately went into other modes when that fell through, and they were trying to get a grocery store there, trying to do Vanport Square there. There are several grocery stores they so talked not, about. You're not talking about the Vanport practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Vanport, the, 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 this was all part of their plan from the, okay. going back to like 1995, so 96. So they, they helped develop the Vanport plan. They, they developed, developed the Vanport, okay, okay. the Vanport Square that's there okay. today. Now let's get down to the Trader Joe's. Well, this is what I'm getting to with Trader well, Joe's. Way back in 2001, I mm -hmm. think it was, was the first time Ray ever brought up with me that he was going to talk, he's going to figure out a way to get Trader Joe's to get on MLK. Now, those of you who live in Northeast Portland and remember Northeast Portland in 2001, it was getting better. We all knew it was getting better. But honestly, did you really think Trader Joe's would go any place in inner Northeast Portland in 2001? I thought Ray had been smoking something really good. You know, um, I couldn't think of what the city could give the Trader Joe's, including free everything <laughs> to get them to go there. But Ray was very resolute. He was like, this is a good fit for the community. It's going to send a message to everybody, and it will attract not just you know good commerce, it will attract other businesses to want to be around it. it, it you know, on paper, it makes sense. But being a, you know, a rational person, you're thinking, man, this other thing, that's hard. You could work on other things that are easier. But Ray was very, very clear. Um, and he did, was every time I talked to him, you know, I didn't talk to him every week or every day, but he was always working on this. And then I, you know, I got into banking for a little while. And then I, you know, I met some Trader Joe's developers and some trade people who did banking with Trader Joe's. And that's what was shocking me. They were talking about this. You know, imagine me sitting in an airport in my, in Memphis, Tennessee, talking to a guy who develops Trader Joe's, talking about. Well, you know, I'm out. I'm flying out to Seattle, but I'm gonna stop off in Portland and look at this location. I mean, just happenstance. You know, I'm gonna look at this location in um, in Northeast Portland. Do you know anything, Fred, about Northeast Portland? <laughs> you know, and okay, I'm, so you've established the fact that he was very much involved in, in uh, initially on the Trader Joe's piece all right. the way through. Okay, so now let's bring this up to today. Today, Trader Joe's, Joe's commits to the deal uh, and everything but the signature in 2010. But we're in this thing called a recession. 
And Trader Joe's, Walmart, and a bunch of others basically said, if we don't have our shovels in the ground right now, we're not doing nothing. So they basically backed off and didn't do anything for a couple of years, which is, hey, everybody was doing it. McMenamins did it. Everybody did it. 2012, um, you know, I'm not going to get into everything that I've, that, that I've heard because a lot of it's hearsay, but it, 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 this is what it comes down to. Trader Joe's is back on the table. Okay. PDC intentionally um, he, he excluded Ray Leary out of the deal and gave the same deal that they agreed to d give Ray Leary in 2010 to Majestic Realty, a billionaire developer out of Missouri. Now, this is the problem. Now, what's the deal with Majestic? Majestic, they are a development company. They are a private business. You know, I'm, I'm not hating on them. You know, if, 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 a, if a, the 22nd largest city in the United States called me up and said, I got $2 million to give you to do a development, you know, they got an IQ above five. They're going to say, oh, yes, we're going to come down. So now Majestic owns the property, right? That Not yet. I don't, to my knowledge, the city no, isn't true. The idea, the idea is to sell them the property for the about 500000 500000 And then they were going to lease it out to Trader Joe's. Yes, right? Trader Joe's. Okay, keep it on. Now, but the issue is this. The reason why they were given a discount. You remember, the property's worth about $3 million. They're selling it to to Majestic, Majestic for 500000 The reason this formally exists, this discount, is to help small and minority businesses develop. Majestic is neither a small or minority business. They're owned by a bunch of well-educated, sure, nice white guys from Missouri, okay? And they are filthy rich because they work hard and they earned every bit of it, you know, a, a penny of it. But the thing is, Ray Leary, Gina, and Jeff, they're minorities in that Ray and Gina, you know, they're woman and a black guy. And then- and one white guy. And one white guy, but, what I'm getting to is this is what the city of Portland says they wanted to see. They wanted to see minorities and white people work together and develop something positive for the community, right? Well, if that's the case, what could be more positive than a black guy, a white, I mean, a, bl a white guy and a woman work for nine years on a project, <laughs> okay? Okay, to only to be X'd out we, and, we, and have that we, project we, given to a billionaire white company. Okay, we understand that. But at the same time, the billion, billionaire white company, i.e. Trader Joe's, also selected a black contractor to build that, that project. No, oh, they didn't select. I mean, this is Portland. You know they didn't select. You know, they, they're trying. Well, you know, I'm sure that what's her name on PDC uh, said, I want you to use my family to do the development. Nobody's stupid. Come yeah. on. She wants, and Colas got the contract. You know what? I'm not, I don't even, I'm not even hating on that. You know, I'm not hating on that. This is how, how hard it is for the 80,000 people that are called themselves black in Oregon to get ahead. Colas is probably the most successful construction, black construction company, not just right now, uh, let's call ever. So who are they going to compete with? You understand? I mean, you're going to choose somebody who hasn't had one tenth of their experience just because, her, I mean, I don't, I, I don't like the way it looks. You know what I'm talking about? I wish it didn't look this way. But gosh, there's only 80,000 of us. And Bruce. But his sister, you're right, his sister is on the PDC board, okay? Yeah. And, but she did recuse herself, right? Yeah, that doesn't mean a whole lot. I but, mean, but isn't, that, isn't that the way business is run? You know what? Isn't that, isn't that the normal deal? I mean, people get selected to be on boards, but in all due respect, there is self-interest in some way, shape, or form. You know, Bruce, there. we see this so many times with, with white people, and we don't fl bl uh, flinch an eye. You know, we don't even think about it. We have brother-in-laws and of city commissioners getting deals, and and sister-in-laws of mayors, former lover of city commissioners, and stuff like that getting stuff. You know, I, what's more important to me is not whether or not Colas got this deal. You understand? And I don't like the way it looked. You know how it came in? I don't like that a black guy can spend so much time trying to build his community and they be swept away. And the white people that did it are going to go to sleep tonight, feel good, and they're going to go to work and take public money tomorrow. That just drives me nuts. I got to okay. tell you. Right. Okay. You, you, you know, let me tell you something. Wait, and wait, the, wait, some wait, of these, hold it. I got no, no, people no, no, out there wait, wanting wait, me to wait, be wait, nice wait, to gang wait, members, wait, 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 but they can't be nice to Ray Leary. Look, wait a minute. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Okay, now we've gotten that particular point across. Now, when the, the community came involved in the situation and said, hey, we shouldn't do this, when did they come in in this situation? PALF? Yes. A bunch of greedy bastards. Well, what, they just wanted the mean? project for themselves. But now, they who, weren't who, there who, over who, the what, years. What is the organization? What is, what is the organization and what's their, what's their responsibility? They have nothing in here except for white, what white people and media give them. I don't know why white people 
who are in media, like at the Oregonian and Willamette Week, aren't making fun of these guys 24-7. Half of them don't live in my neighborhood. None of them know my mother or any of the black people who live on Cleveland. None of them. I asked every black person that lives in Walnut Park, has anybody from PALF ever knocked on your door and asked you how you felt about Trader Joe's? One, they don't know who the heck PALF is. Two, when I mentioned members of, of, of PALF, think about it. These are black folks. They don't know who they well, are. Serena Boston. You had Serena Boston. Her father one time. You know, they, they, if I had said Lou Boston, Boston, I bet half of them would remember him, but they don't know his daughter. I mean, I ain't hating on Serena. Well, I'm Tony proud of Serena. But what I'm getting to is, come on. The, the media, please, white people in media, start asking some questions. Okay. <laughs> you know? I mean, Palf should not have jumped in but, on this. But, but they said they all. had a concern, though. They had a concern, right? Yeah. They had a concern. I mean, you know, uh, Tony was involved in that situation. Tony Hobson from SCI he was there at one point. Hey, I, I got a concern over the over the over the influence Justin Bieber have on, on teenage girls today, but I'm not having no press conferences over it. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, so what they got a concern. If they're so concerned, come over and buy some real estate in inner northeast Portland. Come over here and do a development. Not one of them has tried to do a development on MLK. None of them. And all the black guys that did try to do development on MLK, I noticed none of you guys are having press conferences. Mr. Bruce Fassard, huh? I noticed Mr. Sam Brooks ain't saying nothing. Or Ray Leary. All of the black guys who have tried to develop MLK have been quiet on this. Everybody on PALF that's been talking, not one of them has tried to do one lick of economic development on MLK ever. Period. Okay, well, uh, but okay. you know what? Okay. You have. Okay. Well, How come well, you well. didn't hold a press conference? You know, you do good. Well, that's why we're doing it now. Yeah, I know you do good. <laughs> How come you it. didn't do that's it? That's why we're doing it. Right Chad, now. Chad's been trying to do yeah. work his butt off for years. Chad, his brother Michael, man, I, I, the, I can think of about twenty black guys over the last twenty-five years who've tried to do something on MLK and couldn't. Just couldn't. That's why. What PDC did with Majestic Realty hurts a guy like me so much. I, 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 it, I, I can't tell you. It's one of the most d disappointing things in my community I've ever had happen. Uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, it is. I mean, the other things is, you know, gangs. Gangs is another disappointing thing. But this is, this is bigger than that. This is bigger than what, this is bigger than gangs in my neighborhood. Well, let's see. Let's get down to the facts now. we got about another eight, eight or ten minutes. We're going to take a short break and whatever, but let's discuss this piece. Well, first off, the mayor of Portland, actually, that's his agency, right, of his responsibility, right? Yeah. He had to sign off on this, this deal, right? Yeah. And, and uh, he signed off on this deal, and the, 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 basically the deal was done. So where do we go from here? Well, is, is, should that discussion happen with the mayor? The mayor should have with, with discussion. What I'd like to see from Charlie Hales is I, I want him to do what he can to help Ray and Gina get this deal back. And I want him to work with the community, not PALF, but people who actually live in the community, the neighborhood associations, the churches, the people who actually live and work in Inner Northeast. I want to help them bring back uh, Trader Joe's and make sure that Gina, uh, Willie, Jeff Sackett, and Ray Leary are involved. That's what I'd like. But you know what I'd like even more? I want the mayor and I want the city commissioners to look toward the future. We... We don't want this to happen again. Black people still live in Portland. We still have a problem with economic justice. We are still developing urban renewal zones. We will do that. What is the city going to do to make sure that in the future, black people have uh, a stake in, e in economic justice in this town with urban renewal? I would re I'd like him to spend, let's say, 15% on the past rectifying issues that, that he can fix and 85% forward thinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're probably going to turn 82nd into an urban renewal zone, like at least parts of it. We're probably going to turn Foster, uh, parts of Foster into an urban renewal, renewal zone. Okay, you know what? We got a lot of black people living around those areas. What are we going to do to make sure that the future Bruce Passards, the future Ray Learys, the future uh, uh, Chad Debnams, you know, are able to participate and are not excluded? What my friends and family, what I want you to know, everybody I've ever done business with, when you look at that corner in Alberta and MLK, that is a blatant example of the PDC, City of Portland, excluding black people from participation. And I know that's not how the average white person in Oregon feels. They don't like, they don't want injustice. And that's just what we just witnessed. 
What are we going to do to make sure this doesn't happen again? Okay. Now, the other thing I would ask you, again, we, we need to still be sensitive to our future, as you, as you say, but we got our youth, too. I mean, the PAL is a group of young folks. You know, They should be at the table. Should we not at least educate them as to what the rationale for The leaders on PALF right now, the old people, they're not going to do it. They're too, they're too petty. They're too whatever. They're, they're, think about it. I've sold more real estate than any black person alive, possibly except for one. There's like one real estate broker. Mr. Plumber? No. Mm -hmm. Well, Plumber's passed on. Um, Melvin Broussard. I mean, Broaddus. Melvin Broaddus. Mm -hmm. Melvin Broaddus might have beaten me. My, and I, and I, I'm okay with that. But this is what's so fascinating. I was telling uh, Chris Gwynn of Dual Realty about this. If you take the about... 10 of the top 10 black real estate brokers that are alive right now. We're all historical figures because we've all done more than anybody before us. If you look at us, we have no counterpart that other than uh, Mr. Plummer 30 years ago. No count. He's our only counterpart. You understand? I mean, it's fascinating. So, you know, whether you're one, two or three, it doesn't really matter. You're a historical figure when it comes to black real estate business. So, Bruce, I mean, what, I really want everybody in the community to think about the future. PALF is a, an, or, or some le black leadership organization isn't going to be able to do it alone. White people are going to have to start demanding that white political leaders be su uh, show success in developing economic uh, justice opportunities for black people. I, I, I can scream and, and, and believe me, there are some people at PDC, you know who you are, you're going to be getting some verbal abuse from me when we meet, okay? I can do that all day long. That's not going to change anything. It really isn't. I'm, just, I'm gonna feel good by making those people feel uncomfortable, but really nothing's gonna change until white people and black people start asking for effective results. You understand? And that is, hey, uh, Charlie Hales, what have you done during your political career sure. to allow black people uh, to participate in the urban renewal zones of Portland. Okay. All right. Good. So I take it then you're for still keeping Trader Joe's. Absolutely. Know? Okay. Good. And the, but the thing is, in keeping it, I, I'm going to keep bringing this up again. This was a brilliant idea by a brilliant black man. Okay. All right. Sounds good. All right, folks. Well, you've heard it from Fred. What we're going to do? We're going to take a short break. We're going to just sort of close, and we're going to give you a little history. We're going to give you a, a little visual of history that I'm sure you'll all appreciate. This was back in 1982. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Again, the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host, and my guest today is Fred Fred uh, Stewart. And, and we're talking a little bit about, sort of give you a little feel for about what this Trader Joe's situation is all about and whatever, but it's quite obvious that the community wants the, wants the project. I mean, Absolutely. You know, the community as a total. Kind of had a little blimp in the road, and that's it, but hopefully it will go forward. And now it's in the hand of the mayor. I think I, he's really the point person to really solve this problem. So, again, to Mayor Charlie Hill, and hopefully he will resolve this problem. And in all due respect, he made the commitment right off the bat. And so we appreciate that, right? Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair. So I mean, gonna, Charlie's a good guy. Good, good. What we're going to do is that now we're going to go on, and I think we got to say got an extra two minutes or so. What, what's your close? Get anything closing things you'd like to make a statement to? A couple of things, Bruce. I want to thank you, not just for this show, but this thing you're going to show everybody, that is an incredible piece of Portland history. I hope people stay and watch it. That, uh, that project that you built still there, and you're the, you, you, we don't have a lot of Bruce Fassards in, in Portland that have done what you've done, especially in inner Northeast Portland. I mean, I look at guys like you, Chad Debnam, Ray Leary, um, uh, Sam Brooks, uh, Lou Boston, the late Lou Boston, yeah. you know, the people I met in my lifetime, the late Willie Harris, uh, Paul Knowles, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm saying to myself, how come these guys in these urban renewal zones, these people have shown success, how come my city has not worked with them? You understand? I, I see. Join I, with me in okay, here we go. I'm saying this is Let's true. Let's get the show. Right. Let's get the Historic show on the road. Occasion. This is 
Reverend Jackson. He's Reverend Jackson. Uh -huh. Oh, they can't see me or anything. Can they see me? Uh, he joined with me in, huh? in saying this is truly yeah, a uh, uh, historical occasion. Okay, good. And the history that is connected with this is, is more than just the fact that a building is going to be put here. It, it's a, a kind of new beginning for uh, some of us, and uh, I think a great deal of credit and a great deal of honor goes to Bruce and uh, the way he has arrived. Uh, the way he has uh, brought himself to the place of having this creation. Uh, I want to say congratulations, Bruce. And then I, I want to offer prayer, which I hope is a memorial to this occasion. And then I'll introduce Mr. Mumford, Reverend Mr. Mumford. <laughs> and Reverend Mr. Mumford will bring his group to sing. Shall we buy it? Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who looks upon the whole family of man as thy children, in, irrespective of race, color, or creed, and who dost desire to have each one housed and clothed with beauty and the strength of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Let thy blessings rest upon Bruce Bussard and his associates as we begin the task of completing this building, the Walnut Park Apartments, to the service of humanity in the name of the Master. May we glorify thee by making human life more glorious in this building. May senior citizens live and meet here in happy fellowship. May thy spirit fill hearts of those who inhabit this house. May their lives find development here in body, mind, and soul. May streams of generous helpfulness flow from, the, from this fountain of blessings to cheer the entire community, the city, the state, and the world. All these blessings we ask in the name of God, who created this world and human life. Amen. I'm going to ask Reverend Mr. Mumford to give us some of the music in his choir. It's so noted for him. Thank you, Reverend Mr. John Jackson. <laughs> we are very happy to be a part of this program. I would like to apologize for some of the members of the group. Unfortunately, they are not here, and we don't worry about that, but we're going with what we have. We like to do this song and as a special dedication to all of the beautiful young senior citizens. And today we can say that the storm is passing over. Hallelujah. This will be directed by uh, Rance McDougall, the assistant director of this group. So we're singing out. We don't have any microphones. Can you hear me out there? Say yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Encourage my soul and let us journey on. Though the night is dark and I am far from home, can see to This was happening back in 1982, and, mm -hmm. and we had community involvement, and um, it was a tough project. You know, being a builder and developer is not an easy process. It's very expensive, mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's a tough situation. I mean, and, I had to Bruce, fight PDC the whole, at the bottom line, but at the end of the day, the project was done. And Bruce, and this is important. why back in the, in, the, in, the, in the mid and late 1980s, the Urban League, people from the city of Portland, people from PDC, um, 
people like Ernie Bonner, the late Ernie Bonner and stuff like that, yeah. felt that urban renewal was the tool they needed to use to help other minority business owners like you, business people, mm -hmm. um, develop their community. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, um, th that's what they came up with the formula to where they would sell the property to the developer for you know a, right. you know right. less money than it was worth okay. to help uh, infuse equity into the deal. We're going to spend more time. This look like they've got it back. We're going to put it back on the air so you can get the rest of this. Okay, going okay. on. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. 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 The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. 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 The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Encourage my soul. And let us journey on. Though the night is dark. And I am far from home. Thank you and good afternoon. Over the past two years, Bruce Sard and Associates have diligently worked to develop the Walnut Park apartment complex. Today, we are witnessing the kind of success that can occur through cooperation between the private and the public sector. The 30th unit single bedroom complex is specifically designed for senior citizens. Not only is it, not only is it designed to the highest of fire code requirements, and soundproofing for acoustical privacy, it is designed to be energy efficient. All units, whether on the east or the west, are designed to receive soft sun in the winter, and overhangs will shade windows from the hot midday summer. Our crime prevention unit has an extensive volunteer program to train citizens in crime prevention so they can make their homes and neighborhoods safer places in which to live. Safety and security measures were also of extreme importance in the design of this complex. The ground floor units will have windows designed to prevent entrance through operating sections. The lobby will be visible from both the street and parking area. Personnel in the complex office will have full view of the parking area entrance, the community room, mailbox area, elevator lobby, and patio. Clearly, Crime prevention design consideration, coupled with extensive citizen training, will foster a sense of pride and safety within the neighborhood. This housing complex is also a complementary to the city housing policy, which calls for the city to support public and private action, which increase housing choices for all Portlanders. Improvements recently made to the Fred Meyer Shopping Center. Street improvements now underway on Union Avenue jobs through the Tektronic facilities and others are all indicative of the renewed economic development interests now occurring in this very viable community. We must continue to create and foster this favorable environment which attract housing, employment centers, and commercial revitalization. Broussard and Associates are to be commended for a job well done and I encourage future private sector investment which are necessary for upgrading and maintaining the livability of this community. In addition, it is a special privilege for me because eight years ago, Bruce and I had a very long talk about this very day. If you recall, Bruce had a very promising career in the Marines. And he came to me one day when I was Miles City's director and said, Charles, I'm thinking about leaving the Marine for the private sector. A very, very challenging move. Uh, those who have been under the protective arm of Uncle Sam sometimes find it very difficult to adjust in the world outside. But Bruce and I labored over that for a number of months. 
and we talked about the difficulties he would encounter. The transitional period he would have to go through, as all servicemen do who leave the service. The insurance agents, working for the banks, no reflection, Bob, Bob. It's not, it's just that they, they, it's a period one has to go through in order to find themselves again. But Bruce stayed with it. He had his knocks, but he got up off the canvas and kept swinging. And this is not luck here today. This is the result of some very hard work by a very, very fine developer. And I just want to commend Bruce for those many years that we worked together, and it's especially a pleasure for me to be able to see this come to fruition. There are so many other people here who have contributed in, in, in a very strange way to what is happening here today. It didn't start with Bruce, it didn't start with me as model city director. This started a very long time ago. And so many of you contributed in so many ways. I would like to recognize some of my uh, colleagues here and those who are aspiring to be my colleagues in the political arena uh, because I don't want to miss this opportunity to give them a chance to be seen. I see Mr. Gates who is here. Mr. Gates, raise your hand. He is a candidate for the one of the city commissioners position. Uh, not mine, but one of my colleagues. Mr. Harold Williams, who is a candidate for the uh, legislature. Harold, you're there. Um, let's see. I see the mayor of the Albina community, Mr. Levin, is someplace here. There he is. Not in the political arena, aspiring, but very close. Greg Smith from the House of State Housing Division. Uh, where? Oh, Harold McLaurin, that's right. Uh, let me see, who else do I see? Pat LaCrosse from Portland Development Commission. Pat, who played a very instrumental part in this whole development. And also an assistant to the governor, Jackie Winters. Where's Jackie? Right there. Okay, but there are so many other people here who have contributed in such a big way, and time will not permit because uh, I talked to the man upstairs, or woman, whatever your case may be, and he said he would give us a little time before he started crying on us. So I want to move right along and call on Reverend John Jackson, who will make another special introduction. When we think of senior citizens in this area, uh, two, two names stand out very prominently. I, I, I think of, almost in the same breath, I think of Edgar Jackson and I think of Marie Smith. And I think of Edgar Jackson, who has since gone, and his activities when he, when Edgar was 80 years old, he got himself a new career working with senior citizens. And Edgar went back to Washington, and uh, I understand he stomped around Washington until he got some things for the community here. And it was remarkable to see a man that had gotten that old and yet had the vigor and the vitality and, and the vision to be able to do some of the things that he did. And along with him went Marie Smith. Uh, it's difficult to understand how people can go for years and years and years and still have a mind to do the things and still have a spirit to do the things. And, and I think that uh, it's so credible to introduce Marie Smith that if uh, any of you here can live as long and be as active at the age she is, if you can do that, uh, I, I think you, you're more than a credit to the committee. Well, come on up here, Marie. And now you're speaking for all the senior citizens. Uh, Reverend Jackson shouldn't say anything about what makes people tick. He's a minister, and he knows through God Amen. that I've been able to live this long and do the things that I do. And still, from, from now on, we want to do. Uh, I, I remember two years ago when Mr. Broussard was running for an office, we had him in our potluck. And uh, he told us that he had was going to do something like this. And you know, I think we have so many politicians who tell you what's going to happen if they get elected. He didn't get elected and he did it. So if he had a, 
If he hadn't got elected, he might have did bigger things. So next time he runs for office, let's elect him and see what he will do. I don't, I'm not talking to the politicians that's running now, but I have seen so many of them run and promise and never do the promise. Don't promise anything you're not going to do because we're watching you. <laughs> this isn't a political thing, but it goes along. And I'd like, I want, like to tell you how proud I am to represent all the seniors that's here, that's coming on, and don't think that we're not working for you when you get to be seniors. And you should be working with us because if you live long enough, you're going to be a senior. But you're old as you think you are. And let's start working now together to have one great center, beautiful new center, over here for the seniors. As we were going through on Mr. Gates's hole in the donut uh, program where we went outside of the city to see the centers, we saw Oswego, Beaverton, Hillsborough, beautiful centers. We saw Lowe's and Fishes uh, activity. And there it looked like a big restaurant with four people sitting around with, with flowers on the table and everything. This is what we're going to do if we get a chance. We're going to have a senior citizens uh, uh, loaves and fishes and set them up like they're at a restaurant. Because some of them hadn't had a chance to go in the restaurant. Not for their fault, but we just couldn't go into restaurants. So we're going to bring the restaurants to the seniors and the best we have if we get a chance. And we want you to be behind us and to do that. Uh, I could talk all day, but I won't. So I am glad to receive this building for the seniors, and I know they're going to enjoy it. And a building with everything intact, that's something that's impossible to think about. So we are be, be happy to have this 38th apartment. And don't everybody try to get in it. Don't move out of your house. <laughs> now, thank you, everybody. Before we go into the ribbon cutting, I just noticed that Senator McCoy just came up. Uh, he works with young people, but maybe he wanted to say something to the senior citizen. Oh, I just uh, want to congratulate all of you on this fine structure that is proposed. Uh, contrary to what Reverend Jackson says, I think my my beginning work in the legislature was with senior citizens. Uh, we chaired the first uh, aging committee in the United States for a state and have gone on from there. And using foster grandparents. And I also worked in the foster grandparent program for nine years at Providence. That's right. Yes. I want to congratulate you again and we know that this fine structure will be a credit to this community. Thank you. Can Charles stop politicking a little while and come over here? Miss <laughs> Smith, yes. this calls for the ribbon cut. Oh, you heard it, honey. You heard it. I didn't know I was too bad. Come on over here. How do you want to do it? You going to let me do it, Charles? Sure, let you do okay. it. I'll just stand Yeah, we're just going to stand here and, and watch you do it. For you. This is the first time I've ever cut a ribbon. Yeah. <laughs> you cutting the toughest part of all. Yeah, cut the thin part. Now I want to cut this. <laughs> <laughs> you, got it. you can keep Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Keep the ribbon. You keep it. This is yours. Keep the ribbon in the second set. Oh, thank you. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. Now we go back to the choir. You go back to the We're going to have some closing music by Reverend Mr. Mumford. Mumford. Where did he go? There he is. There he is. You keep disappearing there. <laughs> Finish it. Uh, this time, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to do a request number.
And uh, we do not have our music with us, but a lot of times you don't need the music. And this is the way that I try to uh, teach these young people that to learn to sing without the music, then the music will come later, and you don't have to worry about depending on that fuck crutch. And uh, don't stop me now, I'm hot. <laughs> we, we have a letter from the mayor that I'd like for you to read. Me? Okay. Uh, this is a letter from the office of Connor McCready, Mayor. Mr. Bruce Brazard, Walnut Park Senior Citizens Apartment Complex, Northeast 6th Avenue and Emerson Street, Portland, Oregon. Dear Bruce, congratulations on the official groundbreaking of the first privately funded Senior Citizens Apartment Complex in the city. Although my schedule prohibits me from being with you in person today, I am certainly with you in spirit. I am with you in spirit. You are to be commended for devoting the time and energy and patience to this project, which, number one, is a privately funded complex for senior citizens. Number two, is specifically designed for senior citizens' concerns of security, fire safety, noise level, and also energy efficient. Three, for actually having the project underway before holding this special ceremony to commemorate groundbreaking. The citizens of Portland deserve to be proud when one of their own people has the imagination and patience to bring a project of this kind to reality. Please extend my congratulations to all the persons involved in assisting this project to completion. Most cordially, Connor McCrea, Mayor. P.S. Tell I said hello. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is tramping out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed his fate for lightning. With this terrible swift sword, he is true. He is true. He is marching. He is marching. marching on. 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 I like that. Shall I sing that other verse? In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with the glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. How he died to make men holy let us die to make men free. He is truth. He is truth. He is marching. He is marching. marching on. out and being with us today. Today is Senior Citizens Day, Mrs. Smith and the community. My day and Greg's day of being when the thing is completed. 
But anyway, thanks very much. I've got a few people I'd like to introduce. Uh, had it not been for these people, and I'm sure you're familiar with board of directors, had it not been for them, this couldn't have happened. And in fact, uh, they were so interested in their project, they flew all the way down from Texas. I'd like to introduce my mother, Mrs. Broussard. And, and naturally, uh, chairman of the board <laughs> is here locally, <laughs> keeping a watchful eye on their dollars, my wife, Norma. <laughs> my mother-in-law is also here today, Mrs. Linton. My sister-in-law from Texas. <laughs> and a first cousin of mine from Texas. And then the next developer, uh, thinking in terms of about 15 years from today, but naturally he'll take over the president of the board, about the next five years, my son Eric. Stand up, son. <laughs> but again, thank you very, very much. You will be hearing about phase two <laughs> once it's completed. We've got a lot of things we're, we're looking at. We're, we're thinking about some innovative and creative things. We're, uh, and hopefully I'll be working very closely with Freddie, who has the contract for the senior citizens. Uh, and uh, we're going to be, as far as applications and whatever, we're going to be working on the criteria along that line. She's got a very diligent person working for her, Mrs. Barbara Bivens. And I'll tell you, Barbara is, really has a watchful eye. And with, with Mrs. Smith here, I, I know I'm going to have to build this thing to code. <laughs> Gary Michaels, the architect on the project. Jim Cardin, he didn't want to get introduced, but Jim's a, an ex-Marine, and we're, we're ex-Marines, but we, you know, once a Marine, always a Marine. That's Jim over there. And where is, uh, where's Bruce? Bruce was No, Cam <laughs> There's Bruce over there. Uh, <laughs> he always provides me with a cigar. <laughs> anyway, that's Bruce Camut. Bruce is uh, my major sub on the job, and I'll be very honest with you, he's very picky. A very that don't happen. No, he didn't. Hey, he's thick. No, I was there. I mean, you remember his mother. Okay, good. Gee whiz, I'm sorry about this, folks. I'm over here chatting with, 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 with Fred here for a moment. Looks like we got a couple of, couple of seconds or so and whatever. Fred, what do you think? Great history. That was awesome watching that. A lot of those people I hadn't seen since I was a kid. Good. And then the other thing I want to share with you. Hey, please, if, if Ray could come on the show, tell him to come on the show and, and share with you. know, and That's what it's all about. You I know, think you and Ray should talk. He should talk. And, and, I, and, and, and he should come in here with Gina and Jeff. Yeah, Gina and Jeff. It He's, sounds good. All three of them should come on here. I'm and proud still, of all of them. We, we should all be proud of them. And they're still developing, right? They're, they're still developing. They're still going out there and doing work every day. They're okay. still contributing. Good. Sounds good. Folks, take care. See you next week. Have a good one.